What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Inside of this tiny box, we've actually got a full-fledged x86 PC that's capable of running Linux or Windows, and it's actually coming in smaller than a credit card. This is the all-new Latte Panda Mu, and with this unit, we can actually even add a dedicated GPU, which is something we will be taking a look at in this video. But getting right down to it, as you can see, it's very reminiscent of something like the CM3 or the Compute Module 3 from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, but we've got a much more powerful CPU. This is not using an ARM chip. This is actually using an x86 CPU, so we can easily install all kinds of Linux distros. It supports Windows 10 and Windows 11. The CPU we have here can do anywhere between 6 watts up to 35 with active cooling. You could go totally passive with it if you wanted to. And I also wanted to give you a quick size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Latte Panda Mu. But this really doesn't tell the whole story because what we've got here is a compute module. It's an x86 compute module. And in order to easily get this up and running, let's say as a desktop PC, you will need some type of carrier board. That way we've got access to I.O. and everything like that. Over on the Latte Panda website, they've got a couple on offer, but the one I have here is the new carrier board light. This basically gives us everything we need to turn this into a full-fledged PC, even a gaming PC, because we do have a PCIe slot here. It is an X4 slot, so we can go with the lower-end GPU, but I guarantee we can up the GPU performance on this little setup. The Latte Pan is coming to us from a company known as DF Robot, and they do make custom PCBs. That's one of the big reasons they're launching this as kind of a compute module. Over on their website, they've got a couple use case scenarios, like a NAS carrier board, a router carrier, a graphics carrier, and they've even got a cluster carrier, so you can add several of these MUs together to get a lot more performance out of the whole setup. But we've got the carrier board light for the Mew here, and it definitely offers everything that I'm going to need for this little board to get set up, even with a dedicated GPU. The carrier board light has two USB 3.2 ports, gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, HDMI 2.0, USB Type-C, which is only for power delivery, We've also got a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack for power input, and this is gonna go hand in hand with that PCIe 3.0 X4 slot that we have here. The only way we can send power to that slot is using the barrel jack for power, and this supports 12 volts up to 20, so we've got a wide range for that input power. It's got one M.2 M key, 2230 size, one M.2 E key, again, 2230, RTC battery socket, CPU fan socket, We've also got UR and I2C on the light version. So I'm sure we will see more come down the road with more IO than this, but this will definitely get you up and running. Depending on the wattage you want to run the MU at, you could go passively cooled. But what I've got here is their active cooler. This is going to allow us to take that up to 35 watts from the BIOS. And yeah, I mean, it definitely makes a difference. 6 watts up to 35. Installation, super easy. It does have some thermal adhesive already ready to go. Got three screws to go in the bottom here. It's gonna mount it right to the Mew. Now it's time to get this inside of the carrier board, but I wanted more storage, so I'm actually gonna be adding a one terabyte M.2 2230 NVMe SSD right here. Now this Mew that I have did come with onboard storage, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, but I definitely need more here to do a lot of testing with it. Once we've got that installed, we can go ahead and slot the Mew right into the carrier board. Got a couple screws that'll hold everything down, plus we've got that bottom plate that comes with the carrier board light. And once it's all finished up, it looks a little something like this. I've still got that free M.2 slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And yeah, later on in the video, we will be adding a dedicated GPU, but the first thing I wanted to go over were just the specs of the Mew itself. It's powered by the Intel N100 CPU. With this, we get four cores, no extra threads, and this will boost up to 3.4 gigahertz. 8 gigabytes of onboard LP DDR5 RAM at 4800 megahertz. This does have an optional version where you can get 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, but you can opt out of that if you want to and just use an NVMe or even a SATA drive with a carrier board. It supports Windows 10, Windows 11, Ubuntu 22.04, and basically, since we're running an x86 CPU, all kinds of Linux distros are going to run just fine on this machine. As for expansion, depending on the board you opt to use with this, you can do up to 9 PCIe 3.0 lanes, up to 4 USB 3.2 ports, up to 2 SATA 6GB ports, 8 USB 2.0, 
four UART ports, four I2C ports, and with the right board, up to 64 GPIO pins. It'll also support one EDP 1.4 display, so we could plug that directly into the board itself, three HDMI 2.0 ports, or if you wanted three display ports, you could do it that way and we could do up to three signals out at one time. So if you wanted two HDMI ports and the EDP connected, it could totally be done with the right carrier board. I'm running from that NVMe drive that we installed in the carrier board. And as you can see, we've got the Intel N100, just four cores, no extra threads, eight gigabytes of DDR5 at 4,800. And we've got the built-in Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units. And the BIOS on this thing is wide open. We can get in there, go down to six watts, up to 35. And I've maxed this out at 35 watts. Wanted to show you here, we'll run a stress test. So this jumps up to 21 just on the CPU. All cores will boost up to 2.8. And let's put a load on that GPU just to see what happens here. Even at full bow, I mean, 100% on the CPU, all of the cores and the iGPU were around 30 watts. You'll see it fluctuate between 28 and 32 every once in a while, especially while gaming with higher end games. But yeah, I mean, it's a great performer at this kind of wattage. I've run a couple benchmarks at 6 watts and 35 just to show you the difference. Checking out some web browsing here, not too bad. Now, one thing I really want to do with this is install Linux on it, so definitely keep an eye out for that video. Since we already had Windows here, I figured we'd go ahead and test it out. Everything populates pretty quickly. And yeah, I mean, browsing the web, checking email, document editing. We've always had pretty good luck at these higher wattages on the N100. Next up, let's check out some YouTube video playback, and we'll just do some 4K60. Let's check this one out. Wanted to pause it. Stats for nerds. Full screen. We are at 4K. And when you take the N100 up to around 12 watts or over, 4K video playback becomes really, really smooth. At 6 watts, you will get a bunch of drop frames here. We're only at 2 right now, but we've got this thing maxed out. But overall, we've had really good luck with 4K 60 playback on this chip and other systems, so I suspected we'd see the same kind of performance here. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, and as we know, we can go down as low as 6 watts on this, up to 35. First up, we've got Geekbench 6. And at a 6 watt TDP, single core here is 784, multi 1937, and at a 35 watt TDP, 1216, and a multi of 3007. Remember, this isn't really going to pull 35 watts on the CPU side of things, that's just the TDP we have it set at, or around 22 watts just on the CPU. I also ran one graphics benchmark for the built in iGPU. 3D Mark Night Raid with a 4,680. And of course, this is a really low score. But remember, later on in the video, we're going to be adding a dedicated GPU to this little system. And for anybody interested, I did run a speed test on that 64 gigabyte eMMC. Definitely not the fastest. It's probably UFS 2.1, what I'm thinking here, just looking at the readings. But it could get you by, especially with a lower end operating system, lightweight like Linux. Now, I want to jump into some iGPU gaming with the N100. And first up, we've got Hades. Now, I'm connected to a 120 hertz display, and I was hoping that we could do 120 with this game, given that it's an easier to run indie game. Not quite there, but locking this down at 60 is a really nice experience. And with some other indie games that I tested, 2D and 2.5D never had an issue with the N100 in this new Latte Panda. Moving back to some older games that I still like to play, we've got Left 4 Dead 2 900p, low settings, and I'm pretty sure we'd be able to handle this at low 1080. Already had the resolution set there for the next game, so I figured I'd just leave it. Not bad, and every once in a while you do see it go down to 59, something you'd probably never notice. But with these older Source games, yeah, it's going to run it just fine. And the final game I wanted to test on the built-in iGPU was OG Skyrim. With this, I had to drop it down to 720p low, even at medium 720p dips under 60, and even at 900p low settings were right there underneath. But remember, on that carrier board, we can actually install a GPU, so let's go ahead and do it now. So for this first video, we're going to go with something a little lower end. This is the newer low profile RTX 3050 with 6 gigs of VRAM. Just going to slot right down in here, and the only way we can make this PCIe X4 slot work is if we use a barrel jack 12 volt to 20 volt. We can't power this using USB Type-C PD power in. 
I've got a 100 watt 12 volt power adapter that I'm going to be using here. It was originally for Pico PSUs, but it should work out really well for this with this GPU. And yeah, it powered up. All I had to do was install the NVIDIA drivers. I've also re-enabled that eNMC so I could do some more testing just to see how fast it is. But instead of using the UHD iGPU, we've now got an RTX 3050 with the Latte Pan MU. You could go higher end if you wanted to, but we're already working with such a low end CPU, I figured we'd already be bottlenecking the RTX 3050, and this is definitely a lower end card. It's the six gig low profile model. Before I moved into gaming with the RTX 3050, I did run a benchmark. Same one we ran on the iGPU, but this time we came out with a total score of 16,452. And remember, on the iGPU, we got a total score here with night rate of 4,680. Graphic score with the iGPU was 4,961. And it's odd, but we did get a higher CPU score over there. If I ran this a few times, we could probably equal everything out. But yeah, with the RTX 3050, graphic score 51,000. So obviously, we've upped the GPU performance here, but we're still working with that low power N100. Either way, we're still going to test out some PC games on this thing. Jumping back into OG Skyrim, now we're at 1080p, high settings, running at a constant 60. Remember on the iGPU, we could hit 60, but we were at 720p, low settings. And if you take a look at Afterburner in the top left hand corner, our CPU power is now, you know, going up to around 9 watts. And that's because we don't have the iGPU roll in here. So it's just sending that power there to the CPU. And that's just enough to get those clocks up on all four cores. Here's Fallout 4, and this is one that I did want to test on the iGPU, but it kept crashing on me. I just don't think we had enough RAM for VRAM on that iGPU and system RAM, given that we're only working with 8. But now that we've got 6 gigs of VRAM dedicated with that RTX 3050, we can play this at 1080p medium, albeit we do get a few dips here and there. And if you take a look at the CPU usage with Afterburner, sometimes you can see it hit up 100%. If I took this down to low, there's a chance we'd kind of stay around 70%, not see those dips and get a nice steady 60. But every once in a while, you see, kind of dips down on us. And the final game we're going to be testing for this video is the newest one in this video. We've got Spider-Man Remastered. 1080p, low settings, and no matter what I do here, even going down to 720p, very low settings, we're right there at 55 up to 59 FPS. This CPU is struggling with this game. It's just not putting out enough performance to keep up. So yeah, we're definitely bottlenecking that 3050. First impressions here for the Latte Panda Mu. I think this is going to be great for embedded systems. Uh, if we had a little more RAM here, using it with Windows and a full desktop experience would be really nice. But I think moving over to Linux with this is really where it's going to be. One thing I'd love to test here is a Radeon GPU with this carrier board. Right now, we've only tested that NVIDIA. I'm not even sure if we can get Radeon booting up, but there's a really good chance we could. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know what distro you want to see running on the Latte Panda Mu and what Radeon GPU you'd like me to pair up with this thing. Going with something like an RX 7900 doesn't make much sense with this CPU, but I'm willing to try it. I think something like an RX 6400 would be awesome with this little setup. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video at the Mew. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave some links down below. And uh, again, whatever you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.